painful this year? No difference. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? Hello and welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Scott and I'm a guitar teacher. Now, I've got a question for you. Do you find that no matter how much you practice or drill a certain sequence or a certain song, you still tend to trip up over your own fingers every now and again? You don't have the control over your fretting hand that you might want and it might be hindering your progress on the guitar. Now in this video, I'm going to break down the science behind fretting a guitar string, what actually happens and what might be going wrong for you. And I just want to say, everyone goes to this at some point, but it might be something glaringly obvious that we can correct quite quickly and give an instant change to your guitar playing. So if you want to learn how to fret the guitar strings more efficiently, don't fret, I've got your back. <laughs> so let's break down the process scientifically. Now on the board of knowledge, I'm going to break down the process of picking one note. Focusing on the fretting part, obviously, that's what this video is all about. And once you know the process, it might make it easier to identify what you are having difficulty with. Before the guitar makes any sound at all, the note starts in your brain. Brains! Now this is your general awareness of the note that you want to play. I do know where you need to be. Is the signal that you're sending to your hand clear? Does it know which string you need to be on, which fret you need to be on? What's the name of the note? Why are you using it? Then that signal gets sent to your hand. Worst hand I've ever seen. Like the guy at the end of Robocop. And once your hand receives that signal, the right finger goes down on the correct fret and it squashes the string down. Now the act of fretting is just shortening the string. If you think about it, the actual mechanics of it, the string is fixed in two points, the bridge and the nut. When you pluck that string, it vibrates. Now, as you fret that string, it'll get shorter and shorter, it'll vibrate faster and faster, and the note will go upper and upper. The, the, the pitch will increase, it'll get higher. When you're finished playing that note and you're ready to move on to the next note, your finger will release. I don't know what to do for a release. And as you release your finger from the string, it stops vibrating and the sound will stop, usually. It's not the only option. You could do a pull off, you could do a hammer on. There's a, there's a few different routes you could go down from there, but we'll assume that that's the, the normal general process for fretting one note. Once you've released the note, you go back to your brain and decide what the next note is going to be. So now when we look at this process, we can kind of analyze what could be going wrong when you're playing. Now, sometimes when you play, you bypass your brain completely. You may have practiced the same thing so much that you don't think of what the note is, you just, you just go and, you, and that's it. Now sometimes you can play too fast for your brain to think of where you're going next and you run out of ideas or when you're improvising, you, you, you hit a dead end. Now that's because you're not thinking. You're letting your fingers think for you. They just go down. Your fingers are absolute idiots. That's what I always say. They don't, I have no idea what they're doing. They just don't know. They just do whatever they want to do. <laughs> Your brain needs to be their boss. Tell them exactly what to do in a clear, succinct way. Is that the word? Might not be the right word, but I'm sticking with it anyway. So the first part of playing anything, any sequence of notes, any phrase, any section of a solo, arpeggio, scale, chord, anything, it needs to be clear in your head. Now, when you're reading tablature and playing something like sight reading it, it's not being filtered fast enough. It's going through extra filters. You're reading it. You're trying to interpret something that's on paper and getting it into sound. That takes a long time to do that. There's more that there's more processes that your brain has to go through. When you've learned a song and you don't have to sight read it, it's in your head. You know exactly which part is coming next, where you are, what's, what's happening next. Then your brain can focus on that signal, sending it to your hand very, very clearly. And one problem that I've noticed with a lot of students who want to get into it really quickly, they'll play songs up to speed with the song straight away. And it's just not enough time to think about what the next note is going to be or the next chord or where, you, where you're moving to. or You know, it's, there's just not enough time. You've got to build up to that. Use a metronome very, very slowly to build up the speed so that you've got time to think about things. You're giving your brain a chance to know what's coming next, send the signal, what's coming after that, send that signal, and it, it'll, 
it'll manage. You need to find a speed that it can manage at, not just chuck it in the deep end and expect it to work. Now, the next step in the process is your hand. Now, this is much more me mechanical. There's a few things that you want to make sure that you're doing when you fret and note some things that eliminate fret buzz. First thing being, you want to fret the note as close to the fret wire as possible without going over. That way, you're making sure that the string is in contact with that fret wire. That's the point where the string gets shortened. If you're further away from that fret wire, but still in the fret, then you may have to press harder to get that string to sound, to get it in contact with that wire. Otherwise, you might get fret buzz or no note at all. Now, that can lead to pain in your fingertips and just general fatigue. You might not be able to practice as long when you're squeezing down really, really hard. So the next point I want to bring up is finger biases. Ten people tend to gravitate towards using their strongest fingers, especially in the beginning, unless you're told not to. Now, consider this me telling you not to leave out your little finger. Use your little finger. It's there to be used. Fret with it, reach with it. You know, what might be happening if you're tripping up over yourself or you're not fretting efficiently is your fingers might be overstretched and you might find it difficult to get in that prime fretting position really, really close to the fret consistently, especially at speed. Now, most guitarists are made of the same stuff as you. You've got the same amount of fingers generally. Don't hit the comments, Sue. What about Django Reinhardt? I know full well about Django Reinhardt, so shut your mouth. Now, there are going to be people watching this video that swear by playing blues without your little finger. It's more feeling there. It's easier to bend, lots of vibrato, stronger fingers and such. But if you're finding it difficult to fret a note, it's either because you're using weaker fingers every now and again, or you're overstretching with less fingers than you need to. And if either of those are the case for you, then you need to spend time building control over all of your fingers. Your little finger will never be as strong as your index finger, but you need the same control. It doesn't have to be as strong. And while you are building equal control, it's very important to be aware that each finger does not move independently from the others. You may think it does, but it actually doesn't. So let's take our hands. I'm gonna use this hand as my example. This is my fretting hand, it's my left hand. And I want to talk to you about finger independence. Now, when our fingers receive the message to move, there are no actual muscles in our fingers that control movement. Instead, we have tendons on the back of our hand. Well, you, you can see mine quite clearly, uh, like puppet strings underneath my skin, which are controlled by muscles further up your forearm. Now, what's interesting about the way our fingers move is each finger doesn't have its own complete set of independent muscles that controls movement. Some of them actually share muscles. So if we take our index finger as our first example, it's very free. It can move almost any way that it wants without affecting the movement of the other fingers. You can keep these ones very, very straight and your index finger will move any way it wants, more or less. In the same way, if I squash this finger down, imitating the movement of fretting the guitar, you fret like this, fingertip to, to the fretboard, so I'm using my fingertip to squash to my thumb. These fingers are free while I squash that down. So it is fairly independent, your index finger. But when we look at your middle finger, your middle finger will bend at that knuckle independently without affecting the movement of other fingers. The same for your third finger or ring finger, that will move independently at that knuckle only. But as soon as you start to, to imitate the same movement as fretting a guitar, the same way we did for our index finger, things get a little bit strange. If you push the tip of your middle finger into your thumb, your ring finger will be very restricted. You can't keep it straight anymore, and it will want to kind of close in the same way that your middle finger is. They share the same muscle to move in that way. You can try this with your third finger, squash that one down, and your middle finger will kind of do the same thing. I can't keep that straight anymore while my third finger is pressing down. Now, if you were watching this video and you're doing this experiment along with me and you're doing this, and you think, oh, look, I can do it, I can do it, they're independent, I'm an amazing guitarist. Well, that isn't how we fret a guitar. We fret a guitar like that, where every knuckle is curved and your fingertip is coming straight down into the fretboard. That's the closest way that we can do it without the guitar. You can do it with the guitar if you wanted to, but I just wanted to draw eyes on my hand. 
and your little finger, your pinky finger, if we do the same thing, is very closely connected to your ring finger. So they always tend to do the same thing. And you can try this in different orders, you can try different, different movements as much as you want, and it will always be the same, because you can't get away from the way that our arm and our hand is built. It's always going to be the same for everybody. So keep that in mind when you're trying to improve your finger control and finger separation. It may take some time to build that fine motor control that we're after to separate the movement. One really good exercise you can do is the, the sequence of notes at the beginning of Eugene's trick bag. Now the last thing I want to mention before moving on to the last step of the process is hand position. Now your hand position does play a very big important part of fretting, but I don't want to talk about it here too much. It's something that I've gone into quite a lot. I've gone into a lot of detail in my workshop, my beginner's workshop, as well as other things like rhythm and changing chords. But hand position is something that might be quite important for you to look at. You can find that link below. It's a completely free workshop with lots of downloadable content and you can leave any questions in the comments for me if you've got any specific worries or problems and I can help you as much as I can. Now the last point of this process is releasing the note. Now there's not a lot I can say about releasing or just take your finger off the string, but I do want to talk about something that has been brought up before by, by much, much bigger YouTube channels than me. And I don't agree with it. I don't think you should be thinking of this at all. And it's your resting position for the fingers you're not using. It doesn't matter how far away your fingers are from the fretboard. What matters is the one that you're fretting down. You can do what you want with the other ones. It doesn't impact the note. <laughs> The argument is that if you look at anyone that's played for, for a long time, a lot of people who are comfortable playing the, the guitar and the, at a very high level, they will all play in a very efficient way where their fingers are very, very close to the fretboard, they are there poised, ready to go down, and you should be the same. But it's not something that we consciously develop. I've never ever thought of, oh right, my fingers are a bit too far away from the strings, I need to make them closer. It's never come into my brain at all and is not the difference between an advanced guitarist and a beginner guitarist. It's got nothing to do with it. It's just the fact that your fingers get comfortable in a more efficient position. But it shouldn't even be in your brain. It shouldn't be written on your practice routine to keep your fingers as close to the fretboard as possible when they're not being played. It doesn't make any sense. It's like doing a tutorial about how to keep the sun out of your eyes. Just make your eyes smaller. You do it naturally. Don't worry. Now, so far, we've only spoken about fretting one note, essentially. Now, all that happens at speed for groups of notes, whether it's an arpeggio or a scale or a phrase of a solo. And sometimes when you play those groups of notes, your brain isn't aware of each individual note. It kind of logs it in as, as a group of notes, like a full scale. You initiate a scale sequence. When you first learn a scale, did you remember how difficult it was to play backwards for the first time? It's because your brain is registering that like in one sequence, one process. The more that you keep your brain engaged in what it's doing, the less chance it is going to mess up. You know, the, the, there's a higher level of um, consciousness that your brain is in. And sometimes you can lose that. Sometimes you drill the same thing so much that your brain switches off and your fingers will just go. It's kind of like that gets bypassed completely. Your fingers just do whatever they want to do, like I mentioned from the beginning. Now, to avoid that, you can include in your practice routine something that pushes your brain a little bit, thinking about rearranging the notes in a different way. Now, one thing that I do with my students is sequencing. You can take any scale you want and play a four-note sequence through the scale. So from a major scale, you can play the first, second, third, and fourth. Then you play second, third, fourth, fifth. Then third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on and so on and so on. And you end up not just training your fingers to move in these you know, quite difficult positions in different sequences, but your brain has got to tell them where to go. And then you do it all backwards. Once you've learned it and you can go through it without thinking, then you change things up again. Then you use a new scale. You can use, a, use a new numbered sequence, a three note sequence or a five note sequence. But the last thing that I want to say on this topic of fretting the guitar strings more efficiently is don't worry when you mess it up. It doesn't matter too much if it's just 
um, you know, an irregular thing. If it always happens, then think about these points to help you. Go through the different exercises that I've gone through. And I just want to say that all of these things that I'm talking about, there are full detailed lessons all about it on my platform. If you want to join up, there's a free trial included and you get to explore all of my different courses, all the different areas that I've built to help guide guitarists like you. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit like. Thank you so much to the people who subscribe to the channel. It really, really does help me grow and reach more people. And if you've got any difficulties or problems in the guitar at the moment that would be helped by a full breakdown video, then please let me know because this video has actually come from a comment that was left by one of my subscribers a few weeks ago. Don't forget that I love you always, subscribe or not, and I will see you very soon. I love telling them to shut their mouth. <laughs> Maybe I should should have been a solicitor. <laughs>